Terraria is a great game that I have around 1,500 hours in on the Steam version alone, and through my 8 week worth of playing this game, I've come up with a few criticisms and problems that I have with my favorite game's progression. So I say that we get straight into it. Pre-hard modes first, and the pre-boss section is what I'll talk about first. Pre-boss is a mixed bag due to it being slow and unexciting, and most would want to skip it despite its importance as it establishes how fun it is to explore in Terraria. When you make a new world, you never know what's in it, and coupled with your limited power, it's fun to use your brain and find out how to get to certain places. Plus the most important upgrades happen here jumping accessories, speed accessories, and general movement upgrades like grappling hooks, and more like mounts, are all majorly important upgrades to stay with you forever. These permanent upgrades give a real feeling of progression even though you aren't explicitly told where to find them. And in that way, I believe that the pre-boss section of Terraria is amazing. Of course, parts aren't very satisfactory like how much work you have to put in, but the work you put in has a great payoff thanks to what I'd call the Terraria Golden Era. The Terraria Golden Era, or post-boss, is the most enjoyable section of the entire game as your hard work finally plays off and small enemies aren't issues anymore. With this new power, you can access all pre-hard mode content and by the end fight the wall of flesh, where afterwards the Golden Era ends. What I really like about this section is that everything in pre-hard mode technically is already unlocked and the only bosses that you must defeat are the corruption boss and the wall of flesh to keep progressing. Other than that, everyone else is optional, which adds a level of variety through playthroughs. Of course, fighting some bosses before others is highly suggested, but still. Pre-hard mode's class progression has the most variety at this point, since you have to do something different for everyone's armor and weapons. Mages have to go to the jungle and get their armor, or they can break a demon altar and get meteorite. Summoners have to go to the icebound and get their first summon, and hell to get their obsidian armor. Melee has to go to the evil biomes and kill their evil boss and hellstone so that they can get their hell armor, whatever it was called, <laughs> I forgot right now, I didn't write it down. And rangers have to go to the desert to get their first set and then the dungeon to get their second set. Everyone has something different to do which means their experience in early pre hard mode will be different, unique, and specific for each class that you go for. The weapons in pre hard mode are all grounded and understandable for each class, from melee melee as your strongest weapons will be actual melee weapons as opposed to ones with projectiles. Ones with projectiles exist, but they'll certainly be replaced by swords like the Knight's Edge later on, and by then, most projectiles will be pointless. For all of these reasons, I believe that pre-hard mode is the best part of Terraria. You're setting up everything, classes are highly diverse in their progression, and most bosses are optional, which helps a lot with playthrough diversity. So now, let's talk about how hard mode ruins that! Oh yeah, join my Discord, uh, link in the description, it's pretty small, but you could suggest some video ideas or discuss things relating to anything on my channel. Quick clarification, I still have fun with Terraria's hard mode, it's just that I find it to be basically worse than pre-hard mode in all ways. This is the weakest part of the game. Having to go underground three times for two pickaxes and a full set of armor, plus you actually must do this because you can't craft much without an adamantite forge or mithril anvil is garbage. The process of doing this is tedious and boring, and unlike pre-hard mode, what you do is the same for all classes except summoner, where with summoner you just go into a stupid little spider biome and kill a few spiders and bam, you get your armor until like post mech. It's crap. Compared to pre hard mode, this variety literally doesn't exist at all. You used to be able to go for four different sets as soon as you spawn. Want to be a mage? Go into the jungle. Want to be a ranger? Go into the desert. But hard mode says, want to be a ranged, melee user, or mage? Then go into the mines. It's tedious, and it takes away possible replay value that the game could have had as you are no longer exploring different parts of the world for your armor. Especially since exploring is a big part of Terraria. I know that you probably already explored a lot, but I feel like you could still explore some more. Now I know about some adamantite armor alternatives like the frost armor for rangers and melee, or forbidden armors for mages, but you still have to go into the mines for adamantite to even make any of them, just like everyone else. Even with these alternatives, the core of how you get these items is the exact same. I understand what they're going for in the pre-mech section of the game, but it just doesn't work because of how they implemented progression. Random spawns in hardwood are annoying as hell. A lot of the time I'll be mining for palladium armor or something, and freaking parts will come out of nowhere and wreck me because I'm not strong enough to deal with them yet. Because you know, their their qualifications for their spawn get this, their qualification for their spawning is that you have to break an altar and have 200 health. It's basically that, like it's absolutely crap. Make bosses also basically, you just have to be in hard mode for them to spawn as well. So they will most likely spawn way before you're prepared. Um, pre hard mode comparison again. During that, the only boss that randomly spawned was the Eye of Cthulhu, and he spawned usually whenever you were actually ready. Only way you wouldn't be ready is if you didn't have Hermes or something. 
Same as the goblin army because there's actually an understandable spawn condition where if it isn't met then they have no chance of spawning and you have to have 200 health in order for them to spawn. But in hard mode, mech bosses and events can randomly spawn at any time. You could possibly have palladium armor on, still have pre hard mode armor or even no wings and it doesn't matter. There's still a chance that a pirate invasion or something like Skeletron Prime could spawn in and destroy you. It's simply annoying and it's not fun to fight at all because you have no way to win. Post mech is an okay part of the game since it's between Plantera and the mechs, meaning you're decently powerful and there's still some stuff that you could do before you kill Plantera like fight Duke Fish Run or Queen Slime if you've waited that long to kill her. Plus, by this point, events like the Pirate Invasion have become fun because you can actually fight them. And you can also do Defender Metal related shenanigans or whatever. To me this part of the game is basically just about preparing to kill Plantera since that's the second most important boss in the entire game. And thus, I don't have much to say about it. Pulse Golem is flat out the worst part of the game and it's why this video exists. You might already be able to guess why in a second, but if you can't then I'll explain some Terraria history so that this makes sense. The Terraria 1.2 update added Golem, the Frost Moon, Pumpkin Moon, Duke Fish Run, the Post Golem Dungeon, and way more content on top of that. And most of this stuff was accessible only right after defeating Golem. Then right afterwards you could play like 60 plus hours of content. Then 1.3 came out which added the Lunatic Cultist and the Moon Lord. Lunatic's death summons the pillars which gives you crafting materials to new and powerful weapons and afterwards the moon lord spawns and all this is accessible right after beating golem and from this you get like 40 minutes of content. There is a blatant conflict here. Moonlight stuff is stronger than Frost Moon, Pumpkin Moon, Duke Fish Run, Martian Madness, and pretty much everything else in the game, making all that content in between the incredibly small or huge stretch of time that is post golem to pre pillars almost pointless. All they had to do in order to fix this so that you could play the game more was make a dungeon enemy or a dungeon drop that summons the Lindsay Cultist, but that only spawns after you defeated a certain number of waves in the Pumpkin Moon or Frost Moon, the Martian Madness event, and maybe Duke Fish Run, and then BAM! Any normal player would get to experience and use all the unique weapons that these events have. And plus, this sort of challenge is unique since it's never been necessary to do an event to progress. But no, the fact that a large chunk of Terraria content is totally ignorable is absolutely horrendous. And for this reason, I find the post golem section of this game to be the absolute worst. The classes in Hardwood, except Summoner, sort of mesh together into the same thing. Enemies now hit so hard that armor doesn't matter much anymore, so to compensate for this, everyone has some sort of great range, including melee. I talked in depth about this in my melee classes on balance video, but basically by hard mode, the melee class starts getting powerful projectiles throughout each part of hard mode, such as the Shadow Flame Knife free mech, Death Sickle post mech, and of course the Terra Blade post Plantera. A lot of these weapons are also similar thanks to the fact that they fall under no niche. When I think of mage, I think of someone who can do high damage from afar with, well, magic, and also debuff enemies. But everyone can debuff enemies as melee has flasks and ranger has special bullets. Everyone can do high damage from afar, and everyone can use magic to an extent, especially melee. So it's pretty awkward that it starts to feel like the different classes are losing their identities as the classes that they are. I say Star too because they don't fully lose their identities as their weapons, especially mage weapons, function way differently from each other. It just feels less like you're playing a specific class thanks to the commonality of solid long range options for the three main classes. Of course about Summoner, Summoner still feels like Summoner, so ass. <laughs> Pretty much hard mode in general is a giant downgrade from pre-hard mode. Even though it's still fun and Terraria is a great game, in a lot of ways it's inferior to its previous section. And in this way, Terraria drops the ball hard with its progression. Join my Discord and subscribe. I've been Alexander. I'll catch y'all later.